guys welcome to pointhints.com today we are going to discuss about sensory part two in biochemistry based on steyer biochemistry fifth edition ebook photoreceptor cells are helped to detect the light these cells absorb the light at the wavelength of 300 to 850 nanometer these cells are located at the retina they are two different types of photoreceptor cells are present in mammal they are rods and cones rods absorb dim light and provide a black and white vision but not a color vision whereas cone absorb bright light and provide a color vision there are 3 million cones and 100 millions of rods are present at the retina have a look on this slide when the light hits the retina it stimulates the rods and cones these rods and cones transmit the light impulse into the nerve impulse into the surrounding cells then into the optic nerve then into the brain rods rods are slender elongated structure which has an outer segment and inner segment outer segment is responsible for photoreception because the protein that is responsible for reception of light is present here. The protein molecule is called as rhodopsin, which has a opsin and lavin cis retinol components. Opsin is a colorless protein, whereas lavin cis retinol is a prosthetic group derived from vitamin A. The tubular structure present here is a opsin protein which is a 7 transmembrane family receptor protein whereas retinol is a thread like structure present here. The absorption of light is done by the opsin molecule whereas the color of rhodopsin and the responsiveness to light depend on the presence of retinol which is also called as chromophore. Rhodopsin absorb light very efficiently at 500 nanometer. This rhodopsin molecule is also called as visual purple. Action of rhodopsin. The spring-like structure present in the image is a opsin molecule. It is a 7 transmembrane family receptor protein because it has a 7 helical structure in it. The bead-like structure present within the opsin molecule is a retinal. It has an aldehyde group and it is in cis form. If there will be no attachment within the, with the opsin molecule, that time it is a free retinal. It absorbs light with a wavelength of 370 nanometer if there will be no attachment. If it is attached to the surrounding molecule, at the 296th position with the lysine molecule, it is a, this attachment is called as shift base. If it is attached and there will be no isomerization. Isomerization which is nothing but conversion of cis form in the retinal molecule to the trans form. If there will be no isomerization but there will be an attachment between the opsin and retinal molecule. This time it absorbs 380 nanometer of wavelength of light. If it is attached and pronated or isomerized which is nothing but it is rotated or conversion of cis form in the retinal molecule to transform. That time it absorbs 440 nanometer of wavelength of light. Generally, the calcium ion which is present outside the cell is higher when we compare to inside. These lower level of calcium inside the cell makes the guanylyl cyclase enzyme to activate. It, this enzyme acts on the GTP molecule guanosine triphosphate to CGMP molecule cyclic guanosine monophosphate. When Due to the higher activation of guanylate cyclase enzyme in the presence of low amount of calcium makes the higher amount of CGMP level inside the cell. If the level of CGMP is higher, it makes the ion channel which is present in the cell membrane to open because 
these ion channels are CGMP dependent ion channel. Due to the opening of this, cha this channel, it makes the ions which is present outside the soul to in enter. Due to the influx of ions from outside to inside, it makes the cell membrane to depolarize. After some time of influx of sodium as well as calcium, it makes the other channels to open which is nothing but sodium and calcium channel. Sodium is a fast channel whereas calcium is a slow channel. Calcium influx is balanced by the calcium efflux via this slow channel after the closing of CGMP channel. How this CGMP channel closes? When the activated rhodopsin molecule which is nothing but if the light hits the rhodopsin molecule, it undergo many processes to form the activated form of rhodopsin. If the activated form of rhodopsin is present, then there will be an attachment between the inactive G protein with the activated rhodopsin molecule. Inactive G protein, which is nothing but it has a three subunits, alpha, beta, gamma, if it is inactive stage, it has a GDP molecule. This complex attached with the activated rhodopsin molecule. After this attachment, the inactivate G protein is converted to activate G protein, which is nothing but the subunits are same, but the GDP molecule is converted to GTP. After this activation, the alpha subunit along with the GTP molecule is cleaved from the other subunit and get attached to the phosphodiesterase enzyme which is also present inside the cell. After the attachment of alpha GTP with the phosphodiesterase enzyme, it makes the level of CGMP to decrease by act on the CGMP molecule and convert it into the GMP molecule which is a guanosine monophosphate. If the level of CGMP decreases, it makes the CGMP dependent channel to close. If there will be no opening of this channel, then there will be no ion influx into the cell. If there will be no influx, then there will be no entry of sodium and calcium into the cell. Remember that for every sodium ion influx, there will be an efflux of one potassium ion along with one calcium ion. After the closing of CGMP channel, there will be an opening of potassium channel to hyperpolarize the cell membrane. Along with potassium, the calcium, al calcium ion also exits the cell via their own slow channels. If the light hits the retinal, then it undergo isomerization. Isomerization which is nothing but pronation of retinal molecule or conversion of cis form of retinal into trans form. The retinal which has a trans form which is present in the rhodopsin molecule along with the opsin molecule that time the rhodopsin is called as bathorhodopsin. Bathorhodopsin which is nothing but opsin along with trans form of retinal molecule. If the bathorhodopsin after a few seconds it forms a metarhodopsin. Metarhodopsin which is nothing but this pronated or isomerized retinal molecule just go back to the original form which is nothing but depronated or the trans form is again go back to the cis form. When the metarhodopsin 2 is present it has a cis form of retinal. This metarhodopsin is a activated form of rhodopsin molecule. This metarhodopsin 2 is Similar to 7TM receptor protein when the ligand is activated on it. When this metarhodopsin is formed, this activates the heterotrimeric G protein which is present inside the cell. If the G protein is activated and combined with the rhodopsin molecule, activated rhodopsin molecule which is nothing but metarhodopsin 2, then there will be a cleavage of alpha subunit along with GTP molecule. This cleavage of alpha subunit along with GTP molecule act on the phosphodiesterase enzyme which makes the CGMP to GMP molecule. It makes the ion channel which is present in the cell membrane to close. Have a look on this diff. When the light hits the 
rhodopsin molecule it get activated to form metarhodopsin 2 this activated metarhodopsin activates the g protein which is present inside the cell it is generally in inactivate stage but due to the presence of activated rhodopsin molecule this g protein also gets activated the complex of g protein along with the activated rhodopsin form the transducin g protein is activated then the alpha subunit along with the GTP molecule get cleaved and act on the enzyme phosphodiesterase generally. But it also act on the ion channel directly to make the cell membrane to depolarize by allowing the ions which is present outside the cell. Recovery which is nothing but we have to inactivate or inhibit the hyperpolarization process for some time remember that if there will be a continuous absorption of light by the rhodopsin and there will be a continuous interaction between the rhodopsin and g protein and there will be a continuous activation of phosphodiesterase enzyme these process make the cell membrane to hyperpolarize continuously we have to stop this process for a while to make the cell membrane to depolarization for some time. We can inhibit this process by three ways. By directly inhibiting the interaction between the metarhodopsin and G protein or by directly telling the alpha subunit to not to act on the phosphodiesterase enzyme or we can directly inhibit this process by increasing the level of CGMP. How can we inhibit the interaction between the metarhodopsin and G protein? The, the protein which is called as arrestin, an inhibitory protein which prevent the interaction between the metarhodopsin and G protein. For this attachment, the metarhodopsin has to undergo phosphorylation. At the serine and threonine residues which is present in the opsin molecule of metarhodopsin, at the carboxy terminus of the above amino acid, it has to undergo phosphorylation by the enzyme rhodopsin kinase. By this step, we can inhibit the interaction between the metarhodopsin and G protein. We can also inhibit this process by telling the G protein not to convert it into active form. The active form of G protein is alpha beta gamma subunit along with GTP molecule. By telling the alpha subunit not to undergo GTPase activity, by preventing the GTPase activity, we can inhibit the activation of GDP to GTP. If there will be no GDP to GTP conversion, then there will be no attachment with the phosphodiesterase enzyme. In the presence of alpha subunit along with GDP, it again rebinds with the other subunit and makes them go back to the inactivate stage. Step 3. By increasing the CGMP level, we can also make the cell to depolarize. If there will be increase in CGMP level, it makes the ion channel to open. Then there will be an influx of ions. It makes the cell membrane to depolarize by activating the guanylyl cyclase enzyme. Color vision is mediated by cones, which is nothing but the other photoreceptor which is present at the retina is cones. It is responsible for color vision. It is highly packed or highly concentrated at the fovea where we can see the clear vision due to the presence of high amount of cones. See here, it is a cone photoreceptor. It has an outer segment and inner segment. Outer segment is responsible for reception of light because the photoreceptor protein which is responsible for reception of light is present in the outer segment. It is similar to rhodopsin or rods. The photoreceptor protein which is present in the rods or rhodopsin whereas in cones the photoreceptor proteins are blue, green and red. The component of photoreceptor proteins are same but the photoreceptor pigments are different when we compare rods and cones. What are the components of photoreceptor proteins? Same as like rods, these cones are also have the Lavensis retinal and opsin molecule as their component. But the 
pigments are different. 40% of this blue, green and red photopigments are identical with the rhodopsin molecule. There are three types of photopigments are present in the cones. The, they are blue, green and red. If the photopigment is blue in one cone, then it absorbs 426 nanometer of wavelength of light. If the photopigment is green, then it absorbs 530 nanometer of wavelength of light. If the photopigment is red, then it absorbs 560 nanometer of wavelength of light. See here, it is a graph which shows the different photopigments and their wavelength of absorption of light. Here, blue cones absorb 437 nanometer of wavelength of light, whereas green cones absorb 533 nanometer of wavelength of light. Here, red cones absorb 564 nanometer of wavelength of light. These values are approximate value. Please go with the written values. Here, rods absorb 498 nanometer of wavelength of light. See here, the ball-like structure which is present here is an amino acid sequence. Whereas, the yellow shaded portion here is a opsin molecule which is a 7 transmembrane family receptor protein. The orange thread-like structure present here is a retinal molecule. This opsin and retinal molecule are similar to the rhodopsin molecule. But there will be a difference between the rhodopsin and cones photopigments or by the presence of amino acid sequence. And there will be a similar amino acid sequence present between the photopigments of cones. They are 40% identical with the green and red photoreceptor when we compare with the blue photoreceptor. There will be a few difference between the amino acid sequence make the photopigment to absorb different color of light. When we compare green and red photoreceptor, they are 95% identical. But due to differ in the some position make them to absorb different color of light. They are 15 position of 364 position are different to make the difference between the green and red photopigment. If you see here, there is the color balls which is present within the gray color balls. These color balls make the difference between the green and red photoreceptor. Most of the difference between the green and red photoreceptor are at the position of 180, 277 and 285. These three positions will make a big difference between the green and red photoreceptor pigments. There will be a sequence of alanine, phenylalanine and alanine in the green pigment. Whereas in the red pigment, there will be a sequence of serine, tyrosine and threonine. It make a difference between the green and red pigment. But in the other position, other than the 15 positions, they are identical with each other. Remember that humans have two different type of photoreceptor cells. They are rods and cones but they have four different types of photopigments they are rhodopsin blue green and red photopigments but when we compare to animals mice and dog have two different type of photopigment of cones they are blue and green these animal only absorb blue and green wavelength of light but when we go to birds it has six different types of photopigments. They are rhodopsin, four different types of cone pigment and one pineal visual pigment called pinopsin, which is a unique photopigment which is present in birds. Rearrangement in the genes for green and red pigment leads to color blindness. If you see here, there will be a transcription between two sequence of genes. This transcription is not properly occurred. Due to this, it leads to color blindness or deletion of some genes. It leads to color blindness. Due to recombination, 
between the two sequence it leads to deletion of some genes see here there will be a presence of six genes is given here due to recombination due to improper recombination there will be a deletion of these two gene is seen here and other four genes are recombined to form a new sequence but in case of 2% of human X chromosome carry only a single color pigment gene which is nothing but recombination is occur but only a single gene alone is present other genes are deleted approximately 20% carry 2 which is nothing but two genes are recombined to form a new specific sequence and other are deleted 50% carry 3 which is nothing but 3 are recombined to form a new sequence but others are deleted 20% carry 4 and 5% carry 5 or more approximately 5% of male have this form of color blindness generally humans are trichromatous which is nothing but they have three type of photo pigment for the color vision they are blue green red in case of color blindness these people are called as dichromatous because they have only two photo pigments in this slide the transcription is or recombination occur within the sequence it is a gene that is responsible for synthesis of red pigment and it is a other gene which is responsible for synthesis of green pigment if there will be a recombination within these sequence then it leads to formation of new hybrid gene this gene is not synthesized either green or red pigment properly so the person not able to differentiate between green and red color thank you for watching please follow us in blog for written notes